Alright everybody, before we start the video, please navigate down, hit that subscribe button, make sure you ding that notification bell as well. Also, make sure to like the video, and please, if you want to support the channel, head over to my Patreon page and subscribe. So why did I switch to an Energizer battery? Well, some interesting history on this. You know, I started with a Duracell 600 so many years ago. Um, and that powered my ceremony and cocktails. And, you know, I, I knew that there was always going to be a potential problem with, you know, the types of power output that these batteries used. I had always assumed that it was like a modified sine wave that had uh, been on the 600s. Um, but later I actually found out that some 600 models actually put out a square wave. Some others put out a modified sine wave. I actually happened to get one that put out a square wave. You know, I always heard a little bit of a hum in the background when I had, say, just my Yamaha, you know, cab speaker plugged into it. And I always thought it was a ground loop issue, but it was actually the type of power that was being distributed out of it. And then I took my UPSs that I ultimately invested in and uh, bought one for ceremonies and one for receptions. I would occasionally swap them out to try to keep the batteries as fresh as possible on them. But it was a great but somewhat heavy solution to lug around. This is all consumer you know, level stuff, never intended for the type of uses that I was putting it under, whether it was for you know, you know, backup for a reception rig or a complete standalone rig that I could occasionally get a hour 45 out of. But of course, you know, batteries kind of lose a little potency uh, from every now and then. And I actually started adding more microphones to my setup, you know, ultimately to four microphones and an IEM. And that gave me about 90 minutes in the best case scenarios that I had and still generally fine, but I was really starting to scratch the edge of, you know, you have a 45, 50 minute, you know, pre-ceremony if things kind of uh, delay. And then if you have a long ceremony itself, next thing you know, you are literally, you know, hoping that, that power does not end. And in many cases I had, there was no direct power to plug into, which I'd always use as, uh, you know, as my primary source. If there was power there, it goes into my UPS to condition it at all, but I had something there. But more times than not, I would run into a situation where there was no power where the ceremony was. And of course, I always needed to be mindful of that kind of runtime. But in the past year, maybe about 18 months or so, you start seeing a new wave of power packs come out. Jackery is definitely one of the larger ones out there. And the majority of these units actually started putting out pure sine waves. So this was like, you know, the holy grail of what you would want in a standalone system. And I wanted to keep my eye out on things and see what, you know, battery packs would come out and see if anything really, you know, had this kind of just magic formula for what I was using. So this is the Energizer PPS240. Um, the 240 represents the amount of watt hours that it has in its total output. And the big differentiator in this, this is a lithium iron phosphate battery. Now for those who don't follow battery chemistry, lithium iron phosphate is a bit different than lithium ion. For one, it is significantly safer. You know, of course you can still make these things explode, but they are much, much safer than lithium ion. And it has something to do with the combination of the chemicals that are used to store the energy and how, if those are breached, how they actually react to the environment. So if you do breach these, you still don't want to be around it, but it is immensely safer than lithium ion. Now, because of everything that's used, you now get 2000 cycles of uh, recharging compared to the typical around 500, you know, usually as little as 300, sometimes as much as 700 with a lithium ion battery. So you're getting, you know, essentially for a lot of people, five, even 10 years of use out of this one battery. So because of the formulation of these batteries, it actually produces a higher discharge than lithium ion, but actually does it in a way that produces lower thermals. You can actually operate this in a wider range of temperatures. So, you know, really strong benefits from switching from a lithium ion battery over to lithium iron phosphate. So a couple quick negatives of lithium iron phosphate in general, uh, before we jump into the Duracell, it is a bit less dense, about 20% less dense than a lithium ion battery. So you would need more material to you know, have the same capacity. 
But to be honest, you know, from the sizes we're talking about here, this is pretty negligible. And because you're getting a, a much larger cycle of uh, charges and discharges out of a lithium iron phosphate battery, you know, you're paying for it in spades by just having a, a little bit more uh, space that's needed for it. Now, because lithium ion has been around for a bit, you're gonna see that prices are usually a little bit more for a lithium iron phosphate battery. And that's again, just you know how long it's been out there. It's a very good chance as time rolls on, those prices do start coming down to be pretty much right on parity with lithium ion. So enough of the chemistry and physics class, let's get into my notes on this. So we're talking 240 watt hours that's rated on this. Now you're never gonna get that full capacity in any circumstance. You know, this is the maximum amount. The typical math that you wanna to apply to this is usually about the 80% ratio. And by the time you get to those you know, bottom dregs of what's left of the battery, most battery tech now shuts off so you don't fully drain the battery itself. So from an efficiency standpoint and all that, you typically want to knock it down at least 20%. But, you know, it's still a considerable amount of watt hours. And in turn, it's producing 75,000 milliamp hours of power. Now, again, this is actually very good numbers to have on hand because once you start kind of seeing how much this actually produces, this is actually better in capacity than my UPS. My UPS typically, I want to say, has around 108 watt hour uh, capacity, which again, for my particular setup, runs around 90 minutes up to about an hour 45. You know, naturally, the more capacity, you know, the more runtime that you get. All right, let's look at the front panel here. Pretty simple stuff. You have your power button on here and it does give a kind of a weak display. It's nothing great. It shows you your five bars, a couple statuses. What can you do? This is definitely its weak spot. You do actually hit the power again to deliver AC power. So just a reminder, if you do buy this, we do have three 12 volt uh, outputs and also a typical input that not only you can use the wall charger, but also solar as well. We do also have three USB-A types, one of those 3.0. In addition, you have a USB-C type that not only will charge out, but will charge in. Not many units you see out there like this. The thing's incredibly light, six pounds. It's just insanely light. It's 8.2 inches by 6.1 inches by three by three. And of course you see this light here. It works, you know, if you need something like that. All right, now I've done a bit of math and when I've taken into account the, uh, the inefficiencies that you run with with AC, along with, you know, you're not getting a full 240, it's probably somewhere closer to like 215, 220. You know, doing the general math on this, it looks like I have about 195 watts of total output on AC on this. For my system that's running around 54 or so watts, this means I should get somewhere around three and a half hours of total runtime. So you know what, let's put this to the test. Let's go over here to the table and find out how long this will run. All right, everybody, we have everything set up here. And an interesting note with the Energizer is this will actually technically work as a UPS as well. I have it connected to power right now. It is charging for the second and everything is fired up. So what we're gonna do initially, I'm gonna pull this power out. I'm gonna start the clock on this. And the goal is around three hours and 30 minutes. I think I'll get just a little bit under that with the amount of capacity that the battery has. As we see here, we're pulling about 53 watts. Um, it's pretty consistent uh, throughout. I don't have a speaker hooked up to this. Normally I'm using my Maui 5 Go's and this allows for a much more consistent drain uh, throughout the ceremony. In general, I don't even need this much power. You know, normally I'm going through 45 minutes to maybe an hour and a half tops, but having that extra amount of power is definitely a peace of mind, especially in such a light package. So we got the clock running and let's see how well this works. So that was frankly impressive. You know, I don't need this amount of runtime anyways, but knowing that I have this amount of cushion in my power, this is 
definitely an absolute bonus owning this unit for my ceremonies. And there's going to be times where I can run even up to eight mics, which will definitely drain things a bit more, but I'll have more than enough capacity to run in virtually any situation. Now, a couple more things to think about. This does have a maximum output of 10 amps and at least 200 watts. I've actually seen a couple of videos out there now that showed brief surges of 240 and even 250 watts. Now, you don't want to run this all the time on a battery like this, but if you're saying running a speaker on this and you have it cranked and you have all this other, you know, uh, amount of equipment on this, you know, you can actually handle some fairly significant surges onto the device, more so than what you would see with Jackery and some of the other models that are out there. And because it's a lithium iron battery, this can actually sit on the shelf and be on standby for almost up to 800 days. So in short, this is absolutely going to replace my battery needs for ceremonies. I was always looking for something a bit lighter. It's nice having, you know, two UPSs to be able to cycle through. And I'll probably actually still bring my second UPS as a backup to an event, but I could probably actually leave it in the car. Having something as lightweight as this it's an absolute benefit, especially with, you know, lugging around all the ceremony stuff. It does get a bit cumbersome with the amount of stuff that I do bring. So any shed and weight, any simplicity that I can find is an absolute bonus. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is an Amazon only product. You can find it for $2.69 at the time of this filming. And also there's a $40 coupon that's already applied. I don't know how long that will be for, but this is what I picked mine up for. Well, there's a video, and I really hope you liked it. If so, please help that algorithm hit that thumbs up, comment below. If you want to support the channel, head over to my Patreon page and subscribe. And of course, if you like videos like this and want to see more, you know, check everything out. Everybody be safe and be well.